Hey, Pastor Michael here. I'm so grateful uh, that you've joined us for our midweek prayer room devotion from the prayer room at Palmyra Grace Church. Uh, here's our devotion. We've been taking one verse from each book of God's Word and, uh, and talking about it. And so today we are in the 18th book of the Bible, 18, uh, which is the book of Job. Job is probably the oldest book in the Bible. Bible scholars believe that it predates even the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible that Moses wrote. More than likely, it was written in the year 2000 BC, um, but this would make it not only the oldest book in the Bible, but one of the oldest books in human history. I find that really intriguing because one of the oldest books in the Bible, one of the oldest books in human history, deals with a question that people are still asking today. It might be the most often asked questions, and it's this, why do bad things happen to good people? And Job deals with that. Isaiah chapter 55, verse eight and nine, uh, in that verse, God declares, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. For as heaven is higher uh, than earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, says the Lord. I guess if God was small enough for me to figure out, he wouldn't be big enough for me to worship. God is so beyond us that there are certain things I don't think we will ever be able to understand this side of heaven, this side of eternity. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, we read that the secret things belong to the Lord. Now, the story in Job is basically this. Job had everything. He had um, lots of kids. He had lots of cattle, uh, which meant he had a lot of money. He had a lot of really nice, nice things. But then in the story, everything was taken from Job, even his health. His friends and, and his wife, they all, they all pity him, and, and they, they think that he should just give up on God, this whole God thing, just give up on God. But Job doesn't. My favorite verse in this incredible story is found in chapter 13, verse 15. The beginning of that verse says, even if he kills me, I will hope in him. See, although Job didn't navigate his difficulty perfectly, he completely shuts down the naysayers right here in this verse. He's saying, even if I don't understand what God's doing, even though it seems to be unfair, even if God should choose to kill me in the process for some unknown reason, I will continue to hope in him. I'll keep trusting in God. Yeah, as you read on, Job's faith is not perfect, and he's going to go through some moments of faltering and doubting. But right here, man, his faith is ignited. Like, it's one thing to have faith for healing, but it's a greater thing to have faith for sickness. Like, in other words, it takes greater faith for you and me to say, I come to you for healing, Lord, absolutely. But Lord, should you, as you did to the Apostle Paul, say to me, my grace is sufficient for you, Michael. I'm not going to take away your pain right now, but my grace is going to be enough for you. Like, Lord, even if you say that, I am still putting my trust in you. I have faith in you. I have faith in you. Not faith that I can get you to do what I want you to do for me, <laughs> but I have faith in you. I have faith in you that you will do what's best because you're God. Even if the affliction doesn't go away, even if the problem continues, even if the solution doesn't come, faith, real authentic faith says, even if you kill me, I will still trust you because, because you were killed for me. You gave up everything for me because you love me. 
Therefore, I embrace whatever you decide to do, Lord. You see, God sees things that you and I don't. God knows things that we can't. Job is here with his body broken out and boils, with his worldly possessions and his family completely taken from him, with his friends and even his wife relentlessly accusing him. And in the midst of all of that, faith flares up in Job. Gang, I pray that whatever you um, are going through today, like whatever it is that, that you might be going through, I pray that you'd be encouraged knowing that, that God loves you deeply. And though you may not currently know the why of what's going on, you and I would be confident in the who, Jesus. The one that you and I can absolutely trust. Even when things are rough and, and things don't make sense, <laughs> We can, like Job, put our trust in him always. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, your ways are truly higher than ours. The secret things do indeed belong to you. I wish I knew more. I wish I could know the beginning from the end like the Bible says that you do. But Lord, I'm so grateful today that I can know you. I can know you. And you are in control. You are a good, good father. Oh Lord, please increase our faith, our trust in you today. We do love you more than we can ever, ever express. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you all. Pray this has encouraged you today. Uh, we'll see you next time.